program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. Alongside Declan Cannon and today's topic dealing with lightning, we'll talk about the various types of lightning out there and also some of the precautions one can take to uh, combat lightning as we're now getting into the uh, severe thunderstorm season that will run right on through the summertime. In addition, we'll talk in the weather and history about a couple of dam breaks, one in Massachusetts that occurred back in 1874, incurring a lot of loss of life as well as an awful lot of damage. Lightning is the thunderstorm's deadliest force. The average annual death toll from lightning is greater than tornadoes or hurricanes. Charlie Welsh explains. Lightning is very dangerous and frightening, but lightning is simply electricity in the air. This electricity can occur within a cloud, from one cloud to another, or between a cloud and the ground. The amount of energy released by a lightning storm is amazing. The total amount of energy in a major thunderstorm is greater than an atomic bomb. Cloud-to-ground lightning is the simplest type of lightning to study. That's because the light produced by the elements of the flash can be photographed and examined to determine physical properties of the flash, such as speed, temperature, and pressure. At any given moment, there are at least 1,800 storms producing 100 volts of lightning throughout the world. On any given day, there are some 44,000 thunderstorms, producing over 8 million lightning flashes. At the University of Florida, scientists are trying to learn more about deadly lightning strikes. Charlie Tuggle has that story. Lightning, one of the most awesome physical forces in nature. About 150 people in the United States are killed by lightning each year. But according to Martin Newman, a University of Florida lightning expert, lightning really isn't that good at killing you. A lot of people are struck by lightning and aren't killed. And some of the people who are killed could be saved uh, if uh, CPR or other emergency medical procedures were performed rapidly enough. Newman has been studying lightning for years. A current experiment at Camp Landing, Florida, involves man-made lightning. Scientists fire rockets trailing ground wires into the clouds, generating lightning down the wire, usually. Lightning doesn't always do what it's supposed to do. The thrust of this study is to design underground wiring that's more lightning resistant. The bottom line is to try to understand what lightning is doing uh, to underground cables and power lines so as to be able to better protect them, uh, to find out what the failure modes are. Lightning can really pack a punch, but the duration is so short that harnessing its power is impractical. What arrives at the ground from a given lightning uh, is only enough energy to light a 60-watt light bulb for about three months. So if you wanted to run your house, you'd need literally hundreds of lightning strikes per month. We may never be able to control or even predict lightning, but knowledge of how it works could help us deal with its destructive power. Take a look at the concept of lightning as we talked about uh, this is the focus uh, for the classroom clock today and you notice what we have here is what we refer to as somewhat of a normal cumulonimbus cloud a thunderstorm cloud and there's actually a separation in the electricity amongst uh, the molecules here in the cloud now typically as you get towards the upper part of the storm cloud we tend to find a lot more positively charged electricity while at the lower reaches of the cloud we tend to find a lot more negative charged uh, electricity and it's uh, the contrast between these uh, thunderstorm clouds the contrast with the electricity within the cloud and the underlying ground that eventually sets up the lightning strike now actually it has to work for a while the 
the mechanism actually starts and it's actually invisible. We don't really see the beginning stages of what usually happens when we have lightning bolts shooting out of these thunderstorms. Now, typically there'll be an invisible little step leader, it's called. It's an invisible current of electricity that will start to flow down from the bottom of the thunderstorm cloud. And it goes in a, in a kind of a sequence. It'll travel maybe 100 to 300 feet. It'll stop for a fraction of a second. There'll be a little bit farther penetration towards the ground. And then at uh, some point when the electrical current between the cloud and the ground get close enough, they actually connect. And we have that lightning bolt. Now you notice there is a favored area, somewhat favored area for lightning within the cloud. If we were to look at the cloud, we could see one part of the cloud we refer to as the downdraft. This is where the precipitation is coming out and the rain-cooled air is heading down towards the ground. Meanwhile, on the back edge of the uh, storm cloud, this is where the air is rising into the storm cloud. And very often, you'll find that the lightning bolts will originate between this rain shaft and where we have no rain but quickly rising air. Now we talked about the cloud to ground lightning bolt and did you know that actually this phenomena happens so quickly that the illumination of that electrical channel, that illumination travels, you ready, from the ground to the cloud, but it happens so quick it's an optical illusion, so we think it's traveling from the cloud to the ground. A bolt from the blue, even though the storm cloud may be many miles away, don't be tricked, we've seen bolts coming out of a storm even though it may be a good five miles away. Here's a look at the answer to that question. For our weather history segment today, we take it back to July 20th, 1992 in Spokane, Washington. It was on that date in Spokane that a uh, town really was taking a heavy assault of lightning strikes. And what was happening, there was a pocket of cold air over Washington State, and the heating of the ground caused a tremendous amount of instability in the atmosphere. That meant thunderstorms. There was not a whole lot of rain with the system, but the lightning, as you can see, was just a phenomenal display. That was back on the stage July 20th, 1992. Okay, weather history for today. I want to take you back to this date, May 16th, and that was 1874, 120 years ago today. That was the date of the Mill Creek disaster. That was a breach in the dam near Northampton, Massachusetts. That is up around the Connecticut River Valley, by the way. That caused flash flooding that killed 143 people the damage at the time now, $1 million. Once again, uh, today's money, that would be a heck of a lot more than that. Also on this date, May 16th, 1883, three days of flooding in the Black Hills area in South Dakota. That, by the way, the area out by Mount Rushmore, and the damage incurred here, $1 million of damage, primarily in the city of Rapid City, South Dakota, on this date, May 16th, 1883. So what do you do if you're in a situation where lightning threatens? Here are a few tips which might help you keep from getting zapped. Lightning is really big flashes of electricity, and there are things we can do to protect us from it. If we are outdoors, we should quickly try to get indoors. We shouldn't try to call anyone on the telephone, because lightning can come in on the telephone line. Lightning can also come inside in the plumbing so you shouldn't wash your hands or take a bath in a thunderstorm. And it can be dangerous to stand at the window and watch the storm. Lightning can go right through a window. An adult should unplug the computer and appliances because the electric line is a good path for lightning. If we are in a car and lightning starts, we should stay in the car. If you have to stay outdoors, stay away from tall trees. Lightning likes to strike tall things. If you are in an open field and can't get indoors, crouch low, but don't lie down on the ground. Stay away from bicycles, fences, and other metal objects. They attract lightning. Lightning is dangerous. Don't take any chances. This message is from the Weather Channel. Very good tips to heed in the case of lightning. And again, we're now into our thunderstorm season over the U.S. Want to know more about lightning? Check out Chapter 11 in the Weather Classroom. Mm -hmm.